Dodo attempts to escape the police after Doc Roberts visits the store. And when the community learns what happened, they develop a plan. And that's where we start part two of the book, The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store. The author, James McBride, and you are listening to Lit Society. Let's Let's get get lit. lit! This is Alexis. And this is Kari. And you're listening to The Society, a podcast about books and drama. Listen, readers, each week, each week, well, I won't say each week with emphasis, (laughs) but I will say each week we select a theme to discuss inspired by the book we are reading. And this week's theme is a game. time you get your retribution (laughs) i'm always gonna try it never goes as well as i think so when i get it i'm going to claim it fully okay okay (laughs) do you know what it means yiddish and german words there are some yiddish words and german words in this book that were defined and i would like to test your memory kari Okay, see if you can recall what they mean. Your prize will be the knowledge that you paid attention (laughs) and you know what the word means. Okay, I love it. Let's begin. Now, this is a word that you've heard before. So you should be able to get it, okay? Yeah. I'll give you the word schmuck and Uh I'll give you a sentence. Okay. You brought us here to listen to this schmuck complain. What does schmuck mean? A schmuck is like a hack, a fool, someone that is not to be believed, someone yeah. who's faking it till they make it, but they never, never made it. Yeah, a foolish or contemptible person. Very yes. nice. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Next mm-hmm. word. Mikvah. The enormous creature was discovered by one of the new wives in the mikvah. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, mikva. This is Yiddish or German? Yiddish. In the commotion? Uh, commotion. <laughs> Easy, I created my own side effects. I love that for me. <laughs> It's actually a woman's bathing pool. The mikvah is Ugh. the woman's bathing pool. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Here's another one. New word. What was the Third large word. creature that was discovered? Remember they found that toad? Or was it a, a <laughs> giant? It was a bullfrog or something. I think it was a bullfrog. In this book? Yes. In this <laughs> Okay. This, oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. yeah I don't remember. Remember, okay. there was a whole conversation about what is the bullfrog? Why? But who's going to do something about the frog in the in the pool? We're trying to build this pool. Where's the water coming from? That you remember? It's in that yes. conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> Third word, trefa, trefa. It was so strong and present, she felt embarrassed and unclean, for the two things did not belong together, the precocious call of the universe and the sloppy, happy piece of trefa that her friend Bernice considered life's greatest treat when they were in school. Trefa. Like trifle? Trefa. No, I was. I, no, that's not. I was sneezing. <laughs> Trifle. Um, I actually know what Trefa means. Trifa, okay, let's hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's yeah. like the mundane. Trefa means mundane. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I got it. All right. That's it. <laughs> Is the meat of animals killed accidentally or by beast of prey and forbidden 
to the Israelites as food. So I th- she Not was talking about properly. hot dogs, the hot dog. Oh. So in this case, it was the hot dog. Yeah. This is when she's in the hospital. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Wow, girl. Ooh, this right. game good. Okay. <laughs> okay. How four many more questions we got? Um, Four. Four more? Yes. Okay, I'm you ready. Got, you got it. You got it. Yeah. Shh. Shul, the German flyers were sent to Yiddish shuls who despised the German loving schnapps. Shul. That's school. <laughs> very close. <laughs> Educa- educators. Very, very close. Instructors. Mentors. No, you're getting ah. off track now. <laughs> I'll give you a little credit. Institutions. I'll give you credit for that. It's actually the uh, synagogue because it's a learning place, uh, right? So uh, you were very close. Mm-hmm. Very good. One point for you. Mm, <laughs> you did pay a little attention. I got the first one. <laughs> this is my second point. All right. All right. Two points for you. Yay, you. Okay. Next. Fifth word. <sighs> Yosher. Yo, sure. Doesn't matter. He ripped her clothes off. That's close enough. What's the in run here? Marv spoken Yiddish. Yo, sure. I don't even know who Marv is. <laughs> he in the book. <laughs> There's someone named Marv in the book that was ripping off clothes. What kind of book you reading? You read the wrong book, Alexis. Again. Um, it's Yo, sure. Well, mm-hmm. it's the opposite of kosher. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that's, though? Yeah, that's something Gentile like. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. Justice. It means justice. That's what I meant. Justice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you this time. I won't oh, take okay. the point, but okay. <laughs> just so we understand, I knew. Yeah, I want us to be on the same page. Really, I do. Yeah, I do. Totes. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, goy. If oh I must goodness. see a goy doctor, I will see one, but not him. German. Close. Gentile. Yes. Yay. Oh, thank ding, ding, goodness. Ding, 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 ding. You got thank it. Thank goodness. I-, I think you knew that one because you remembered the scene. Yeah, the context yeah. helps. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. really, very yeah. much. Mm-hmm. Big deal, big deal. Okay, and for your final word, that's three. That's three. You did good. You're doing really well, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Dumb coughs. <laughs> Dumb coughs. Mm-hmm. But cutting deals with dumb coughs who pinch politicians for marshmallows and cigarettes in a town I don't know, that's out of my range. Um. Uh, Hmm. Gangsters? No. Outlaws? No, no. Is this your final guess? The final guess is Outlaws. <laughs> it's early. I'm so tired. I told okay. I use this oh. word all the time. Yeah. Oh, I was just yeah. saying how them mm-hmm. dumb coughs need to ooh, leave me alone. Yes. And it's such a word that you could use stupid. Foolish. But, yeah, yes. dumb. Mm-hmm. And you cough. Yes. <laughs> and I got a bonus for you, Kari. Okay. So, because you worked so hard, I figured I you need another try. You need I another agree. try. And mm-hmm. this is a this is a doozy because it's two of them. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's fun. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> Zet and Pysher. Listen, Pysher. If you mention that bullfrog one more time, I'll hang a Zet on your head. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So, uh, Pysher, uh-huh. I'm going to say that's like fellow man, brother. Listen, pal. I'm going to say oh. pal. Okay. And for Zet, I'm going to say that's like a um, reward on your head. Like, a, I'm going to, that's your end. Because it's oh. Zet. It's- <laughs> <laughs> Very close. Very close. But- what is it? A Zet 
is a punch. Oh. And the Paisher is a young, inexperienced, presumptuous person. And it, that probably is a little oh more goodness. derogative. In the book, it says squirt. But so a it's young, It's more derogatory? Yeah, it's a derogatory oh, expression. Oh, look at you <laughs> offending our audience. Canceler, kids. <laughs> Canceler. This is how the book is Not written. very Sigma of you, <laughs> Alexis. No. Mm. Wow. Sorry. Uh, so... That's yeah. our game, Car. You Ooh. did. You did really good. Did you get four? I think you got three. I, feel, I think I got all of them. <laughs> well, <laughs> Roll back the tape during maybe, the break, producers. Maybe next time. time. <laughs> maybe next time. And that, folks, is our theme of the week. Shall we Yay. take a quick break? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> got me this time okay Okay. and we're back Kari are you ready to dive in to part two of the heaven and earth grocery store yeah spoilers ahead however I am not going to ruin the end (gasps) of this book because it just came out last year and perhaps some of our literati have not had a chance to read it okay I will say this If you are tuning in and if you've read the book, uh, fine, continue listening. But if you haven't read the book and you did not listen to part one, please listen to part one because I'm not going to really recap it. So in order to get the full uh, breath of the story, you want uh, part one for sure. So listen to last week's episode and here we go into part two. Part one of part two. I know that's confusing. (laughs) (laughs) Gotten. So Dodo has been captured by the man and put into an institution. Um, This should really be a place where he is learning to fend for himself. Dodo is not um, differently abled. He is only deaf. (laughs) So this is really uh, frustrating for everyone involved. Dodo um, became deaf later in life so he can even speak and read lips. So the state has him now. He's in this institution, a small boy amongst a ward of men. Um, And he's in and out of consciousness. He notices people around them. Some of him, some of them are nurses. Some are fellow prisoners. It seems like even some of the fellow prisoners are helping to care for him. And it should be said that he isn't the only one here that belongs in another place. So not everyone here is completely out of their mind. Um, he does meet a friend, though. And what's the name of that friend, Alexis? Monkey Pants. Yeah. Uh, Monkey Pants is a small, painfully thin white child with dark hair. He's about 11 or 12 years old. Um, and he has no gown. He just wears a diaper and an undershirt um, contorted, like to protect himself. And to Dodo, he looks like a monkey with no pants. And so he calls him Monkey Pants. Mm-hmm. Um, When Dodo was thrown into this ward, it was fortunate that everyone was out except for monkey pants. So this allowed the boys time to be alone. Um, He said that monkey pants looked like he was hiding from himself. Mm. Um, He would never learn his true name, but monkey pants would soon become his only friend. Dodo thought that um, hospital people were prepping him so that Addie, his uncle, I'm sorry, his aunt and Nate, his uncle, could pick him up. Um, But then they injected him with something that, like I said, made him woozy. Doctors quickly declared him an imbecile. Uh, All around him smelled like loneliness, death, evil. He vomited. Uh, Monkey pants had cerebral palsy, it turns out. Um, And this isn't something that Dodo would understand, but as the reader, we are informed of this. The two boys just stared at each other in the beginning then monkey pants started laughing and dodo is like what is funny then monkey pants spoke as best he could and it was like a breath of fresh air for dodo someone Mm -hmm. showing him kindness communicating with them as the patients entered the ward monkey pants held one finger to his lips a sign to dodo letting him know to survive here you must be quiet play dumb Mm -hmm. Then Monkey Pants filled his diaper to distract from Dodo, the new arrival. And it was an act of kindness and Dodo appreciated it from his new friend. Now let's go to Moshe. 
Remember, um, Shona was assaulted. She had that seizure and she's in the hospital no- now. So, mm-hmm. um, and remember too, even before then, Malachi with his failing bakery, he um, asked Moshe to sell the business and then Moshe wouldn't see him again for three years. Well, they start writing to each other and it's a joy. Every time Malachi enters Moshe's life, something great happens, whether it's just an improvement of his mood or something like phys- actual evidence that um, Malachi and the old ways are having a positive effect in Moshe's life. Like when Shona was getting better Mm -hmm. uh, the first time Malachi returned. But anyway, um, Moshe asked Nate if he can talk to him with this new joy and this new attitude. um, Moshe approaches Nate and he's like, I want to talk to you and Addie about Dodo. And Nate's like, there's nothing to really talk about. It's above us now. And Moshe's like, yes, I understand. But please, let's schedule a time to talk about it. He couldn't really see Nate's face. He thought Nate was looking off at something. But the narrator lets us know that if Moshe could have seen Nate's face, he would have ran out of fear. Because now the man's face was covered in just complete hatred, constantly. Right. Anger for this injustice that mm-hmm. happened to Dodo. Now let's go to Fatty, Rusty, um, and Nate, who are all sitting in this bar. Now, you'll remember last week I told you that this book is like a a sitcom. (laughs) (laughs) There are so many little scenes. And yes, they contribute to the whole. But the purpose is really to get into the day-to-day life of these characters. So Fatty, who got his tooth punched out, he's got a million jobs. (laughs) After he gets fired from one and his friend Soap punches his tooth out, he ends up going to see a cousin. Uh, Then he convinces a man to uh, let him borrow a horse. The cousin hitches something to the horse that freaks the horse out. Then the man gets upset. The cousin ends up in the hospital with a broken rib because of the horse. And it's a lot. But anyway, the whole point is it lands Fatty behind the bar of a juke joint, which he was already part of the juke joint. But he returns to the juke joint after managing a dry cleaner. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) let it go. If you ain't read the book, you know, just let it go. But if you read the book, Keep ha ha, wasn't yes. that cute? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what so, <a> story. <laughs> so behind the bar, um, he notices that Nate is sitting in the back of the bar. And Nate has always freaked Fatty out. So uh, Fatty arranges for everyone to leave but Rusty. So soon, um, Rusty, Fatty, and Nate are sitting at a table. They're the only ones in the place. Fatty is staring at the floor thinking, what have I done? Why is Nate here? (laughs) Yeah. A little background. So when Fatty was 19 years old, he served two years in prison. And for the most part, because he's charismatic, people like him, he was able to talk his way into better food and better treatment. But one day he made the mistake of insulting a thin elderly man named Dirt. Dirt was serving a life sentence for three murders. So I don't know why Fatty did this, but that's just Fatty. (laughs) Just, you know, people just talk too much. They be joking around. Yeah, I'm one mm-hmm, of them people. Mm-hmm. I completely understand mm-hmm. that. He's like, oh. And once the words are out of your mouth, you can't stuff them back in. Nope. So he probably said, get your looking. And that was it. <laughs> he just roasted him for no reason. <laughs> well, he forgot all about it until he was sitting at the table, I think for lunch or some type of meal. Yeah. And Dirt walked up. And calmly, like a mother nursing a child, proceeds to gouge out the eye of the man sitting across from Fatty. And it was the purpose of his movement and the calmness that really shook Fatty as that eye flew out and rolled on the floor. Not Fatty's eye, but the man sitting across from Fatty. Mm -hmm. Fatty made sure that as soon as possible, as soon as Dirt was out of solitary confinement, he ran over to that man's cell to apologize. Mm -hmm. You remember when I roasted you? I'm slow. I don't know if you know this. (laughs) But I got a lot of challenges. It's a lot of going on and I'm just so sorry. And Dirt was like, hey, just be quiet. That man, first of all, the way Fatty talks lets Dirt know where he's from, where Fatty's from. Mm -hmm. But he... Dirt lets Fatty know that man whose eye I gouged out, he took something that didn't belong to him. It belonged to me. And that's why I did it. Mm -hmm. But I can tell where you're from. You're from where Nate is from. And Fatty was like, Nate? 
yeah, I know Nate. But they <laughs> got to like, do with anything. Yeah, what you? What are you talking about? Nate's just mm-hmm. like one of the old men from my little town. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's like he's not um, f- silly and laughy all the time, but he's definitely not someone I fear. Mm-hmm. Well, Dirt let him know that if that man whose eye he gouged out, if Nate had done the same thing that man had done to him, Dirt wouldn't have lifted a finger against Nate. Ooh. He said for all the cheese and crackers in the world, he wouldn't cross Nate. Nate Love is what he called him. Mm. In fact, he's like, oh, because the Nate I know, that's Nate Timblin. He's like, he might be Nate Timblin now. But in here, he was Nate Love. Mm. So Fatty starts asking around about him and they like, ooh, Mufasa, <laughs> Nate Love. Ooh. <laughs> And so exactly. Fatty gets out of jail and he sees Nate Timblin around. He like, he start looking at the ground like, is that a penny? <laughs> <laughs> he is okay. really nervous around him. Really yes. nervous. So mm-hmm. the whole point of the 29 pages is to tell you that Nate got a pass mm-hmm. and he ain't no man to mess with. Yeah. So when he comes into Fatty's bar, Fatty is nervous. But Nate is just sitting there drinking himself to stupor. Yes. And so the men... um what's his name fatty and um rusty rusty yeah they take nate home put him in bed you know this is to let us know that nate is really going through it he is suffering Mm -hmm. a deep depression because of what's happened to dodo um and then uh before they like leave him he says something to them and they like oh let's get you home they put him in the bed and then they leave in and rusty is like did you hear what he said And Fatty's like, yeah. He's like, what does it mean? He said, what do you think it means? It means we got a free dodo or there will be Uh, trouble. uh. So eventually it becomes clear. Remember um, the state people kept sniffing around the area. It becomes clear who was tipping them off. Of course, it was the reverend. And a few ways they know this um, or Nate figures it out is that the reverend ain't been around to see Shona. And Addie is like, well, why the reverend got to see Shona? Shona Jewish. And Nate is like, because he a reverend and that's his job and he (laughs) sees everyone else. (laughs) But he feels guilty about what happened to Shona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's go visit Shona. Shona is coming to consciousness in the hospital. She's smelling a hot dog. Um, It's very metaphorical because what she's really smelling is the future. Uh, She realizes she's dying. She looks at her husband, now a downtrodden middle-aged man full of grief. She feels grateful to him and guilty for the stress she's caused him with her illness. Mm -hmm. But she loves this man. He obviously loves her. Where's Dodo, she asks. Even Bernice is in the room. And remember, they Mm -hmm. were childhood friends who hadn't spoken in years. But when Dodo needed hiding, Bernice, without a question, helped uh, Shona. Mm -hmm. So dreaming of the future and the way the author puts it, she's she's dreaming of devices that will fit into children's palms that they'll become addicted to that will feed them basically slavery and tell them it's freedom. We're talking about modern technology Mm -hmm. now and where the world is headed. And anyway, Shona passes away. She dies. After Shona's funeral, Paper approaches Fatty, the man with a million jobs who's afraid of Nate. Remember, Paper is the good looking woman who don't Mm -hmm. need no man and she tell everybody business. She's also a laundry lady. That's how she makes her money because she don't want to work in nobody's houses because the men there be too grabby. Okay, (laughs) Paper, fine, fine. And she don't want she don't want the the distress. So she um, she tells Fatty, uh, hey, Fatty. I got to tell you something. <laughs> it's time to free Dodo. Uh-huh. And he's like, right, right. No. Mm-hmm. Also, she's like, all I need you to do is drive me here and here. Nate and Addie are going to free that kid and we're going to help. And he's like, get somebody else to help you or to drive you here and there. But before he know it, he's sitting behind the wheel. He's like, I'm just as foolish for paper as every other man in this town. <laughs> so... He's he's sitting inside the car waiting for um, paper and she's sitting inside a room with a woman named Minnie. Minnie is a low god. And this is like a family name. And it describes a group of people that are very proud. Um, Even the way they worship is very um, tied to their African roots. Um, I think this is the 30s. And they've they've kind of earned a name for themselves. They 
because of their pride, pride, the way they treat um, both black and white people and how they don't suffer fools. But many met paper when they were both doing laundry. They were both laundry women. Um, many married a man who was very violent and somehow paper saved both her life and the man's because it seemed like many was going to uh, take care of that man. So wh- whatever happens, she owes paper and she enjoys paper's company, even though paper isn't a low God and the low guys hang out with themselves. Mm-hmm. They don't yeah. really. Mm hmm. I was going to say, I, I I think the low gods are Gullah. Is that what yeah, you understood? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was thinking maybe Gullah Geechee. Yeah, but I, I, It's not um, explicit in the book. but It's yeah. not, but I think they are the same people. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So soon Paper is sitting in a room with Minnie, a low god, and Fatty, her driver, was waiting outside. Minnie has arranged this meeting with Paper to tell her something very important. Minnie used to work in the institution where Dodo is now being kept. She tells Paper which ward Dodo is in, and she tells her about the Son of Man. This is a nickname given to one individual. He's twisted. And to get Dodo out, you got to deal with him. Part two, Son of Man. So one day Mikey Pants produced a marble and it sent Dodo back to the store with Shona in his mind. He's like, where did you get that marble? Like, did you know Shona? Mm -hmm. But his mother had given it to Monkey Pants. And when uh, Dodo asks about his mom, Monkey Pants gets very far off. Obviously, there's a tragic story there. Mm -hmm. It was three weeks before Dodo met Son of Man. A shadow crossed him. A tall black man came into his uh, vision. A man of strength with calm eyes full of evil. Monkey Pants immediately went into a posture that signified fear. What's your name? The man touches Dodo's face with gentle kindness that sends fear through the boy. Then with one gesture, the man flips Dodo over and stares at his bottom, remarking on its beauty. Then the man walks away. Monkey Pants signed, son of man, bad, very bad. Mm -hmm. Later, Malachi, Isaac, and Moshe, three Jewish men, are sitting together, and Moshe is so happy to see his dear friend Malachi again after such a dark time. Um, That's really all we got there. There's also (laughs) um, a conversation about a well that's very important and where the water from the well comes from. So (laughs) I'm just going to tell you. Fatty and Bernice are brother and sister. Right. Their father used to build a lot of things. He was a very capable man. He even built the first Jewish temple in the area. He also dug this well. Where he got the water from is up for debate because apparently it's not all on the up and up these days. Okay. Now, let's go to Bernice and Fatty because they're going to have a little... A little discussion. Okay. So um, Fatty feels like he can't do nothing right by Bernice when he was in prison. All she did was send him a Bible. He's like, (laughs) she's like, ain't nothing wrong with Bibles. (laughs) Their father was saving up for them to go to school, but then he died. And it's a real bitter note for for them. Um, Yeah. So she does get some information out of Fatty, though, Bernice does, that the their father dug this well and that... Um, what it's, it's connected com- to. Yeah, what it's connected to. Mm-hmm. Before she leaves, she gives her brother a package. He opens it later at the juke joint. He, like, gets behind there, opens this stupid package from his stupid sister. <laughs> and guess what's in it? Cash money. Records. A Bible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Bible. And he like, oh, wow, another Bible. Thanks. <laughs> but inside, like Alexis said, it's five hundred dollars and then a two page like note and then another four hundred dollars. And he rips that four hundred dollars out and throws the package. <laughs> and it, later he'll regret that he didn't keep the full note. Then he had to the juke joint. <laughs> He's trifling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Sue Minnie is holding a meeting with Nate and Fatty. Minnie's the low guy. She is, is it ex- Minnie or Miggy? Oh, actually, it's Miggy. Okay. 
Yeah. So Miggy is the one that had told Paper in which ward Dodo was staying in. So soon, um, Miggy's holding a meeting with Nate and Fatty. We learn here that Nate is a low god. He's from their people. She's like um, talking to him as much as she's talking to the room. She's explaining to them, to all of them the history of the low gods and their love for family and how that is not something to play with. She also has uh, worked inside the institution, as we said, and is convinced that where the that's where the devil does his work because she's seen people in there with marks on their bodies from straight jackets, marks that they've kept their entire lives. And for mm. some of them, that wasn't long because of the institution. So they got to get Dodo out of there. No one gets punished for anything in there, anything that they do to the inmates, which are really supposed to be the patients. She tells them a story. Right, inmates versus patients. Yeah. She tells them a story. There used to be a boy in there, a smart white boy whose parents left him there. He was a good boy. But like he, um, what did he do? He, he barked. Ducked. He ducked. He, he quacked like a duck. That's he quacked like a duck. Okay. Yeah, he quacked like a duck. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. his parents decided they couldn't do nothing with him and put, put him in the institution. But he was a good boy. He was intelligent. And soon she realized someone had been at him. So someone was abusing him in there and it bothered him something terrible. Who was it, Alexis, that was abusing that um, boy? Son of man. Yes. There was an evil in that man. When Miggy threatened son of man, he threatened her right back worse. Mm -hmm. He ripped the boy up inside and soon the boy went missing. He uh, was hospitalized and then they threw him right back in the institution. Mm -hmm. So she's eat, she's talking while eating sweet potato pie. And as they look at the pie, they realize what she's doing is drawing a map. She says, that little boy disappeared indefinitely. No one ever found him. And it could be that he escaped via the series of tunnels under the institution and through the city. These tunnels are empty. No one ever found that boy. And it's said that he's in New York these days, quacking like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it said. <laughs> she continues drawing in the pie, the staff residence, and Ward C1. Do you know who resides there, Alexis? Yeah, that's where Dodo and uh, Monkey Pants reside. And also she draws them the area where son of man stays because he is a low God. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'll end. <gasps> so this is what we have here. We have a map. We have determination to get out Dodo. And we have a well and we have Doc Roberts who needs to find justice. Mm. Um, should I say if it's a happy ending or a sad one, Alexis? No. No. Okay. Well, I was going to tell y'all, but Alexa said I can't. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> And we're back. Alexis, what did you think of the complete work of Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride? Wow. You know, his characters, I just love how detailed they are. You know, there are some instance, instances where you can give too much detail about a character. Yeah. But with his characters, I wanted to know more of their story. Mm -hmm. So I did really enjoy his book. I um should I say I enjoyed the ending? I enjoyed his book. Uh, it, it was a great book and I would recommend it to others. I want <laughs> Did, your well, you can say if you thought the ending fit the story. Uh, I, I'm still thinking about that. I'm still oh, thinking okay. About I that, see that. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. A lot of criticism about this book has been that these side plots don't really feed the story. And when mm -hmm. I think of like Anna Karenina, for example, yeah. it is also full of side plots. Um, but that is the point. Like it isn't just a plot driven book. I think we've gotten into a series or a time where novels have just one plot and one goal and no overarching themes anymore. I mean, I've read a lot of books lately 
Uh, and some of them I refuse to cover on this show just because I dislike them so much. And Ooh. I'll tell you some of them right now. Okay. No exit. No okay. exit. I didn't mm-hmm. care for that book. Home is where the bodies are. Um, Trash. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. People love it. People love yeah. this book. Local woman missing. Oh, my goodness. What? Uh, now, if you want to put these on the list for us to cover, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying I ain't going to do it. Uh, but I'll read it for you. Okay. <laughs> the point is, this is a book to me. This is the type of novel where the characters matter as much as where the story is going is how you get there. Th- those bo- those things both matter. And they both contribute to the themes throughout the book. Themes of family, culture, old ways, true, new ways. True. True, Sometimes true, true. those themes are heavy handed, such as when Shona's dying and she smells the metaphorical future. Mm-hmm. That, that's very heavy handed, but it's part of the it, it makes sense in the theme of the book. Um, these side characters have very entertaining side stories. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. And when I finished the book, I felt like, oh, no, I can't hang out with my friends anymore. Oh. That's the end of the story. Yeah. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend this book. I definitely enjoyed it. I've read it twice. And, um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. Okay, good. Is it meandering? I mean, if you like Seinfeld or The Office, (laughs) do you think those are meandering shows? They're classics for a reason because the characters. Yeah, the characters. Mm-hmm. And I think it must be really hard to write really great, ca- a book full of a really great cast. Absolutely. Yeah. And he did it. Very well done. Did it again. And he wrote in a way that um, only someone who comes from where he comes from can do, where he can tap into the heart of all of these cultures. Mm-hmm. Because that is both his family and the community where he grew up. Love it. Five stars. So now, Alexis, I would like to ask you just a few discussion questions that I found on the bibliophile.com about this book. Okay. Um, now, I thought these were great uh, book club questions. So, Literati, yeah. I encourage you, if you do have a book club and you're covering this book, to go to the-bibliophile.com and find this uh, article or page for yourself. Number one, Alexis, why do you think James McBride titled the book The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store? Mm. I I think for me is because the 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 grocery store was at the top of the hill. That's how I understood it, right? The mm. grocery store was at the top of the hill, and within that grocery store, you had this woman that is generous to all, welcoming to all. So it felt like heaven on earth. So that's my take on it. Well, how it's not you? heaven on earth. It's heaven and earth. And it was and always earth. called mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, but her father had a good reputation as well. Yeah, you're right. And he raised her in a way that she could have. She became the person that she was. So, heaven and earth, Grocery like store. a capable woman, mm-hmm. capable, like- um, generous woman, loving to the community in which she was raised, which she never wanted to leave. Yeah. She found her roots there. And um, I thought it was also interesting that all the characters in this full community, they're all tied to this grocery store. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have the grocery store, there'd really be no evidence of the beginning of their community, Mm -hmm. of the heart of it. And and then the the question is, why is the book titled that, not why the store is named that? So Mm -hmm. the that is why it's named that, because they had this book is about community. Yeah, And the full community is told through the story um, pages of this book. Okay. Yep, I agree. That's beautiful. Which character in this book resonated with you the most? And what character do you wish we got to know more about? Mm, I feel like... I'll say Addie. She was supportive. She was helpful. Um, but she didn't want to be bothered by nonsense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she did not. The way she direct when um, Malachi kept coming to the house, she would tell him to go. And then when he came at that, 
what was it, early in the morning. She mm-hmm. was fed up then. She was like, go on now. I'm not going down there. I'm not going down there. You go <laughs> go and take care of your friend, whoever this is, who who holler is. <laughs> take care of your friend. So I, I um I appreciated her. And then uh, I think I wanted to know more about Bernice. Bernice. Oh, sure. Like, why did she stop going to school? It's not made 100% clear. And where did all these children come from? Because it's a small town. Exactly. And that was the story we heard was Shona's take. It Mm -hmm. wasn't from Bernice's point of view. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just would like to have heard a bit more about her. How about you? How would you answer these questions? I agree with you with Addie. We don't really get a backstory for her. We have a um, some some backstory for Nate, but even how he got into prison, we don't know about. And every character in this book have their own book um, with a their Good. own fleshed out mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. A paper is so entertaining to me. I would like to know uh, more <laughs> about her life. Like when she left town and came back and decided she was going to completely change her way of living what happened when she left town? Mm-hmm. So things like that. Okay. I was I was thinking they did tell us why Nate went to jail. Is it just not in detail? Mm, why did they say Nate went to jail? Um, without revealing. I can't without revealing too much. Of oh, the sure. Part you didn't the take end, in. Perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How do you think Isaac and Moshi's past impacted their personality? And what about Nate? I'll say for Isaac and Moshi, I think their tie to the past really gave them a purpose and a a footing for where they were um, in present day and where they were going in the future. Mm -hmm. I think Isaac's advice, though, about um, Shona was tied to the past. Yeah. Like put her in a home. And Shona and Moshe had a kind of modern relationship. He wasn't mm-hmm. just going to put his wife in a home. Yeah. Um, and they were tied emotionally to each other. They loved each other. And so in that way, I think Moshe was breaking away. Everything about Shona separated him from his traditional past, even mm-hmm. though she was also Jewish. Yeah, but she did things that um, weren't supposed to be done by women as a Jewish woman. Yes, exactly. Reading holy books and mm-hmm. um, yeah talking back to her husband and carrying on. Mm-hmm. So lastly, uh, why do you think Fatty did not go to Shona's funeral? Mm, so I don't think he could cope with the loss. Yeah, there's an immaturity in him. And I think mm-hmm. that was a bit too much. She was mm-hmm. the, the person that made him not hate yep. um, people that weren't black. <laughs> yep. And it got to the point because she, she um, her, his sister Bernice and her were best friends growing up. And so yep. he didn't even see her as like the other. It was Shoshona. And yep, when she yep. died, it really um, broke something in him. I think. Yeah. So. But what about that? Um, the secondary question. Is there a secondary question to that? Yeah. What do you think Bernice decides to go? Or why do you think Bernice decides to go to the funeral? So I I think she deep down knew her friend, her schoolmate, her childhood schoolmate was a good person. Mm-hmm. That um, and she wanted to support that. Mm-hmm. She wanted to um, I guess honor her by attending her services. And even though she's got um, 40 kids by 40 different people, (laughs) she's a God-fearing woman. And there's a spirituality to Bernice where she wanted to um, pay the respect to the family and to her her friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the Heaven and Earth grocery store. Well, thank you, Kari, for those discussion questions. I always love discussion questions. Me too. That get us to dig deeper into the book. I do. I love them. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are we reading next week? Next week, we are on break for Labor Day and we'll have a relit episode for you guys. One of our favorites from the past. We then return with Yinka, Where Is Your Husband? by Lizzie Blackburn. Excellent. Well, thank you for listening to Lit Society. We look forward to meeting up with you next week, Thursday. Lit Society is brought to you by... Alexis Honoria, that's me, and Kari Herrera. Support the cost by leaving a five-star review for our show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and leave a comment in both places and tell us why you love us because we love you too. We love you guys. If you've enjoyed what you just heard, tell a friend about Let Society. Visit LetSocietyPod.com for show notes, this month's book list, and a sign up for our amazing email newsletter. And until next time, 
Read, read something. something.